day. Multiple things ahead. Uh-oh. Let me uh, make sure, guys, because I'm always I'm very attentive of this one thing. Let me make sure we are in queue here. That's good to go. Good to go. Good evening, everybody. We're now recording, by the way. Just in case we're going to... Our admins have hooked up the main audio, right? We're going to start filling up part of our audio server with these audios. In-house, that'll be good. Because we have lots of talks and discussions to have. We also have five roundtables scheduled. Can you guys believe that? Venturing out and reaching out. We really have an opportunity before us. I pray that we take that opportunity as far as it can go. Guys, we're going to go back into the book, Revelation. I'm going to leave it open, though, not really a, a specific place in Revelation we're going to read from. But a type of review, you could say. Plus, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page before we go to Revelation 19. We were reading in 18, and we saw Babylon fall. Now, everybody has an idea of what Babylon is. Everybody does. The book of Daniel really defines Babylon. I'm going to go over some of that in the book of Daniel uh, for the sake of Babylon so that we understand what's about to befall all over the earth. It's one of those things. I estimate the next, probably the next two years, all of us will have seen so many things. So, so many things. Many of us will be different. I believe that things will change. But I need to give you guys a type of a caution concerning the kingdom of the beast. And I want to know from you guys, what do you think the kingdom of the beast is? So that we can all be on the same page here tonight. I'm going to be back in a minute and let everybody waltz in, whoever's coming. I know I'm a bit late, but uh, this will be up running about three minutes. I'll be right back right here at COT. God bless everybody out there. Tell us you are you're good to go. Everything is all right. We should be good to go. Whew, what a day. Well... Hopefully everybody is doing okay today. Hopefully you guys are. I have some questions for you guys. I really want to know how you all identify with the world before I tell you anything. This is important to me because it will help me to help you guys out. That it will. And it seems, since from your positions, the world may be a bit tedious, it's full of mysteries and everything else, right? But I want to know, I really need to know, what you guys believe, what you think. This will help me fine-tune some of the criteria going forward. Especially, uh, with your families to see where you are. Because at some point, at some point, we're going to have to go right, get down to the brass tacks of all these things. No more mystique, right? No more cryptic uh, subjects. No more enigmatic answers. Straightforward, but I warn you, being straightforward, well, if given outside of the context of which we are uh, occupying this world, and given outside the context of the Word of God, is, is, is uh, not good, so we can't do that. We have to be careful never to go outside the Word of God. And the reason why, it is so easy, so easy to wrap yourself up in these issues that happen in the world, right? And have no outcome. Have no favorable outcome.
outcome? None. And we have to tackle all of it. From your leaders, to your lives, to what the Lord has given me to give to you. To the multitude of questions people are going to have and to deal with fear before it ever comes. And a myriad of situations. I'm going to give you an example. We're all believers in Christ, correct? Not too many people deal with death very well. Because they, they still believe in death. How many of you believe in death? I know it's a weird question, but how many of you can handle death? Don't feel bad if you can't. It just, you know, that's one of those things. As a believer in Christ, to really believe is to believe it all. Not, not partially. Right? You guys know one of the number one phrases I have here is that not one of you should be powerless. Not one. Not one. Lord knows. If, if I can be favored the way I am, you can be favored a thousand times more. If the Lord can heal me of all the things that have gone wrong, none of you should be broken. He can heal you. It doesn't matter what it is. It does matter where you believe you are. It matters what you believe you have. It matters where you believe you stand. You know, in the Bible it says, as a man thinketh, so is he. How you think is what you eventually become. Think about that for a moment. As a man thinketh, so is he. That is a scripture, right? As a man thinketh, so is he. Well, how do you think? When you look at the world, when you look at your families, when you look at yourselves, are you free or in bondage? Most people will say, I am free. In truth, there are lots of elements of bondage. Emails are pouring in, right? Emails that continue to read emails about folks having night terrors. Those numbers are increasing. Those numbers should not increase. And these are people I've never heard of before, not you guys, but other folks out there who are having night terrors. They continue to write in. They continue to write in probably something they heard. But the number is building. Not the regulars that I see in the chat rooms. Not you guys, right? Not some of the ones who, who donate either. Not you guys. These are brand new people who are having night terrors. Yet they say they're a Christian. You know, they say they have a good relationship. But they're having night terrors. But they also admit that they have areas in their lives they haven't dealt with. Listen. The Lord's coming back, right? He's coming back and he wants all of us to be prepared for him to come back. Are we prepared? Let me give an example of being prepared. Does the world overwhelm you in any way? In any degree. Because it should not. Can the world alter your attitude? Because it should not. It should not have that power over any of you. It shouldn't. Do you have any reservations about politics? About where it's going? Does it truly bother you? Because it shouldn't. Not one iota. It's okay to have a love for the people and a big heart towards the people. But what men do in these kingdoms should not move you at all. Why? Because God did not give them the authority over the elements of life. He gave you the authority over the elements of life. You're the ones walking around with the authority. But if a person does not know their stance in the Lord, they can often be defeated by forces in the world. When the Lord comes back, he's coming back. You guys have heard it. He's coming back for a church. This is what you guys are familiar with. This is what they say. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Correct? Isn't that, correct? Isn't that what people say? 
that he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Correct? Oh boy, I feel it stirring in me tonight. Without spot or wrinkle. You guys know where that's located? Anybody? Anybody know where that is? Where he says he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. I've heard people say this. I have. I've heard people say it. Can anybody grab that scripture, please? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody know where that scripture is? Help me out. Somebody find it. Go get it. Give me the chapter. Give me the book. Give me the chapter. Give me the verse. Somebody find it. You guys have heard it, right? You've heard that saying. Everybody has heard that saying. Come on now, I'm making a point here. Everybody has heard that saying, right? I used to hear it when I was young. He's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. I heard that saying. Come on, somebody share it with me. Where is it? Please help me. You guys have to tell me to be quiet if I get too loud. I, I feel myself getting stirred already. See, when it comes to the enemy and his perpetuated stuff, I don't like that. Everybody's starting to see Ephesians. Ephesians? Here's what Ephesians says. I'm going to do this. You guys can't correct me, right? That he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Uh-oh. What? Let me read that again. It starts out. That he might present to himself. Uh-oh. One, one more time. Because that changes everything. That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Wait a minute. Okay, that does not sound like he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That didn't sound anything like that to me. Let me read the whole thing. Can I read the whole thing? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Oh, that changes everything. That changes everything. Let me, let me, let me get this see one more time, please. One more time. One more time. Let me go back up. Let me go back up. Ephesians 5.22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord for the husbands. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See, that changes everything. I did not hear in there where he said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. What I did read what I did read was that Christ sanctified. He sanctified what? He did what? He gave himself for the church, number one. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, he gave himself for the church that he might sanctify and cleanse it. So he gave himself that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Let me continue. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself. So he sanctified the church, he cleansed it, he washed it, that he might, what? Present it to himself. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Oh boy, that's just, that's you by the way. That, that's you. That is you. That's you. So what does it say he did? He sanctified and he cleansed it. He did that, not us. He did. He sanctified and cleansed it by the washing of water by the word. By the washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. By the word. That, why did he do this? Why did he sanctify and cleanse it? With the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself. This is all his doing. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. 
huh? not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Boy, that changes everything, doesn't it? Huh? That changes everything. See, because I used to hear a lot of people say, well, well you, you got to straighten up because the Lord is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. I never read that before, not once. What I did read is that Christ died on the cross. He died on the cross. He did. He did. He loved the church and he gave himself for it. Right? He sanctified and he cleansed it with the washing of water by the word. Right? He did that that he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. If he's doing all that, he's doing all that to you. Uh-oh, see, now we're going to get somewhere. Not that you're doing anything to earn your position in the church. Nope. He's doing this for you. He is doing this for you. Well, everybody's trying to break their neck. Right? Because let's go ahead and face it. We read this before. Right? We read this before a thousand times. Yet the phrase persists. And people continue to say he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That's incomplete. Christ died. He died. He died. He gave himself for the church. Is his work in vain? No, it is not. He gave himself for the church. He gave himself. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Washing of water by the word. Washing of water by the word. Did you hear that? Washing of water by what? By the word. Wait a minute. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. So that means he's been working on the church this entire time. He's been working on you this entire time. Oh, so your life is not happenstance. So these things that happen are not just circumstantial. Oh, no. They're purposed. Oh, my. And the Word of God is an intimate part of it. Oh, yes, it is. Because, listen, the church is being washed by the Word of God. By the Word of God. By his word, not Caesar's word, not the president's word, not my word, not your word, but by the word of God. We're going to get somewhere with this. So his purpose is to sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word of God. You know, that's a, that, that's a, that's an awesome phrase. The purpose of him giving his life is that we may be washed, that we may be cleansed. But by what method? The word of God, that method. The word of God. And why? Why does he want us all cleaned up? That he might present it to himself in glorious church. He's been getting you ready. Oh, my. He's been getting you ready. You ready. See that term, that term, cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You've never heard that before? It's phrased a bit differently in the Hebrew. You remember when God said he picked up Abraham, the Hittite and the Amorite, and he washed them. You remember that? Same thing. Wash. The process of washing is to clean something up by something else. In this case, he's cleaning us up by the word of God. See, somebody said baptism. and No, he's cleaning us up by the word of God. It doesn't mean if you get baptized, you're totally clean, you can go ahead and enter in wrong. That's not what it means. No. We're being cleaned by the word of God. Do you guys see how important the Word of God is? How incredibly important the Word of God is? The number one thing Satan attacks, which is why people, people have so many theories about the Word of God, they're losing it. 
You're being washed, cleansed. And what it means is when you read this word, it's going to have an impact in your life. Now, if you've been one of those busy reading everybody else's word, well, you know. But when you read the word of God, it will have an impact on your life. You're being washed. You're being cleaned up by God's word. And this word is free for everybody. Everybody can read this word. This word is made available to the entire earth. Hmm? So what are we talking about here? The responsibilities Jesus has taken upon himself. He desires to present to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. No blemishes or any such thing. He's been doing this this entire time for us. Now, some people say, well, you know, um, some people won't like that. Do you know why? Because they think they truly think that by their efforts, they're supposed to be recognized. That's a worldly characteristic. Throw it away. What it means is, in the kingdom of God, if you work 90 hours a week and somebody else works two hours a week, the one that works two hours could get a, a bigger crown than yours. That's what that means. That's what it means. The greatest, the least, the least, the greatest, the first, the last, the last, the first. We are spoiled with worldly doctrine so much that if we're not careful, it sneaks into our minds and causes us to read things like this and totally misstate it. Now, how many years, in truth, how many years have you guys heard that term? He's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. How many have heard that term? I've heard that term over and over again. I've never been able to find it. Never. But I've also heard that Jesus is going to present to himself a glorious church. He's been doing all the work. All the work. We're being washed, we're being cleaned up, we're being purged by the word of God. But how many people, how many people are trying by their efforts and how they make an open show to everybody else think that they're going to enter into the kingdom of God? By how people approve of them. How many? See, that thing gets into our heads. We can't get it out. And if we don't read the word of God, right? Listen, to begin to challenge these things that we hear. And yes, I said challenge, meaning. Those things you have not read that somebody else told you. You're in a position to go back and hear it yourselves. You can read the source of it. Make sure that you validate the word of God by the word of God. Make sure that you validate the word of God that somebody tells you by the word of God to make sure, to make sure you have the word. Because if you're running around with somebody else's word, it's going to do you damage. There's no way the church is powerless. Do you know that? that? How can the church be powerless? Jesus, working all those miracles, you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me that's not running rampant in the church? I tell you now, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Now, what do you think is wrong? What do you guys think is wrong? Do you really believe that miracles are some, you know, Somebody, uh, you know, stretched a story to some little lie in the book, some metaphor for something else. How many of you have experienced a real miracle, a real one? How many? I'm not talking about somebody was sick and all of a sudden they got well. I mean, one of those ones that nobody can deny. Like somebody's arm that was short grew to a perfect length as the other one, right before your eyes. I've seen that one. That was a very real one. I've seen a short arm person whose arm returned back to normal size. Just like that. I've seen that. 
It did not happen in the environment you think. I've seen that. Now let me ask you this. We know that God has power like that. Why is it not being exercised among those in the church? Huh? Why are so many broken in the Lord's house? Why? Where's it at? Where is it? Can I share something with you guys? In the Bible it says, it says, God watches over his word to perform it. Do you guys ever hear that? God watches over his word to perform it. I heard that before. You guys hear that before? God watches over his word to perform it. I've heard that. Right? And if he watches over his word to perform it, then we just have to be careful to have his word. What's been happening is we've been running around with some other word. We have. There's no way God's word is going to fail for turn forward. God is not mocked. Hmm? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap also. God is not mocked. His word does not return void. We know that. And God watches over his word to perform it. We know that. Right? So what's the problem? The problem is we've been, we've had somebody else's word. Small alterations. Tiny alterations change the entire word, right? Good people, good people in the house of God fighting over ideologies of the word, what they think the word is. We need to rush and get to the point. Get to the point where we can see the word by the Holy Spirit. That God becomes our revelator. That by his spirit, we know the exact same word. I can assure you, there's no lack of power in God's word. There is a, a drastic lack of power in everybody else's word. Theories are nice, right? Sometimes they're nice, sometimes they're comforting, but they're simply not the truth. We need the truth, right? We can have the truth. And what do you think would happen if we all agreed upon one truth? And determine that truth upon everyone here. What do you think would happen? I'll tell you what would happen. That truth would befall everyone here. And everyone here would be a partaker of that truth. That's called repair. That's our Father's promise. Then why are we not doing it? What really has a hold on us? We have to find it and break it. Don't you think? Something has a hold on people. And we have to find it and break it. You know when somebody says something, right? And all of a something, all, all of a sudden something rises up within you. Some sort of envy, envy, animosity, something like that. Right? And you start to go against or challenge what somebody else spoke. You're, it's not that you're in agreement. You don't like the person speaking a specific thing. Well, they get recognized for saying a certain thing. And you don't want that person to be recognized for saying that because you had that a long time ago. So you have all these emotions that rise up causing differences and fights. And you do your, you know, somebody else will go out and do their best to define it a different way. That causes division in the word that we have. And if division is in the word that we have, oh my, how can it be affected? How can that be effective? You guys tell the truth, the honest truth. How many of you guys have ever been mad at me? Go ahead and tell the truth. Tell the truth. You'd be surprised. What I already know. But how many of you guys have ever been mad, right? How many of you said this word? I'm not, I can't listen to this. Click. It happens. It happens done it. If you've been listening to me, right, I have pushed you 
near the edge. I already know I am. I know I am. There's no harm in saying, uh, you, you know, well, yeah, uh, you're not close there. You know, you, 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 I didn't, nope, didn't want it, but nope. It was just something. You couldn't really define it because it went against. Listen, when somebody goes against something you've heard all your life, you don't want to hear that person. When somebody throws a phrase that you had a good time around or something like that, they just toss it to the ground like it's nothing. You don't want to hear anything else from that person. I already know I do that to people. I know I do that to people. I don't really. But here, here's the deal. Have you noticed I do not like man's interpretation of the word of God? I don't. It is highly destructive. It aligns with a destructive nature that's in this earth. It breeds nothing but anger, hostility. And why? Because it does not fit for a person's pathway. That, that pathway they planned didn't fit that. And fit it. And more now than ever, we need the Lord's truth. The Lord's truth, when it comes, listen to me, when it comes, it never comes without power. Do you know that? God's word is never without power. Never. Not ever. And so when God's word comes, oh my. And if another happens to join in with that same word, oh my. And if another tunes in with that same word, then we're operating by the same spirit. Have you guys ever heard me say, I don't want you to agree with me? You guys have heard that from time to time. It confuses people. Now, why would he ever say that? Anybody ever get confused on that one? I don't want anybody to agree with me. I want them to receive the same thing I received. Or something, something along those lines from the Most High. That we can agree upon the truth. I do not want you to agree with me, but to agree with God's word. As I agree with God's word. Because I know if we have that, if we have the Lord's word, all this other stuff, it won't prosper. The bondage will not prosper. It will be broken. Your enemies will not prosper. They will flee from you several ways. I know the impact of God's word. Not our word, but God's word. And we need that more now than ever. This world has truly turned upside down. And I pray that none of you become a part of what's about to happen. But the only way a person can avoid that is by two ways. The Lord keep you away from that. Some of you are being kept away from things. That's why all of a sudden, during this election year, you're going through things you never thought you'd go through before. You have to go through it. Because if God were to release you and let you go, you'd be right in the middle of a hornet's nest. You'd be part of the issue out there in the world. The Lord's saving us. We just read. We just read how he's going to present to himself a glorious church, and that's why he died for it. Right? That's why he's cleansing it with the word of God. That he may present it to himself without spot or wrinkle. He's getting us ready. He's shaking off all the scales that shouldn't be there. It's like a scab. Anybody ever have a scab? Right? You ever have a scab? Surely, many people have scabs on their life. God removes them when they're ready to go, but they are scabs. Right? Scabs grow over your skin. After you've had a wound, your body attempts to repair it. It continues to bleed. The blood cells die. They get crusty and hard, but they seal your skin in. While, you're, while that underlying you know, skin is healing, that scab is hard. Some people pick at it, right? You pull that thing off before it's ready. You're going to feel it. It's going to bleed again. The wound's going to come back. You let that scab fall off. Guess what happens? As soon, when it falls off, it's totally healed underneath. Right? 
The scab is a hardened thing. Makes you look odd, doesn't it? It's a part of your life that people see. They're looking at this part of your life and they say, Ew, right? That's a scab. You know that part of your life that's confusing, right? The part of your life you seem to have lost control over. You're truly seeking change and you're full of questions. You keep going back to it because you think you can figure out some formula to get yourselves back in order and you cannot do it. That's a scab. That's a scab. Underneath it's healing. One day that scab is going to come off. One day you're going to be able to see that area of your life again very clearly. Will I have a scar? Sure it will. But scars are good. They remind you that a healing took place. The world doesn't see it that way. They see a scab and they say, Ugh. I don't want anybody to see the scab because they're trying to present themselves. Perfect. Listen, the world is trying to present themselves to be perfect. The Lord works the opposite way. He's working on us to perfect us. The world is trying to perfect themselves. But the Lord is perfecting us. Isn't that awesome? He's doing it. It's my point. And when he does that, you're going to go through all of his processes. You're going to have all sorts of scars. But scars indicate that you've been healed. That's what a scar is. They indicate you've been healed. All of us have had wounds. Some of us have not dealt with those wounds. Some of us will not let anybody get close to the wounds we actually have. Hmm? So the Lord is doing it for us. He's doing it. Not me, not you. He is. Can't you see your life? Can't you look at your life and know that something is out of whack? Something is. No matter what you do, no matter how many times you attend church and everything else, no matter how many times you end up talking yourself into the fact that everything is okay. You'll sit there and talk to yourself, say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, everything is okay. But in truth, there's scabs all over the place. Don't worry. Those hardened parts of your life that seem they don't want to go anywhere. It's all right. Those persistent things that stay and stay and stay, it's okay. Right underneath that persistent thing in your life is a wound. Do you know that? That persistent thing that won't leave, there's a wound. So there's a cause for that wound. A cause for the wound which caused the scab. You're fighting tooth and nail to get over it. You can't do it. You're not going to remove this scab. And the Lord is doing the healing. All you have to do is continue to persist and live. Just live. Keep living. You'll see that deliverance. Because this is something your Lord is doing to you. Yes, and they itch. They itch, right? Which means you're going to touch it from time to time, aren't you? You're going to go back to it. Why can't I get rid of this? Why can't I overcome this? Why can't I, you know, get through this? The healer is working on me. But what do you see in the world? What do you see in the world? You see a bunch of people trying to present themselves as brand new. In the world, they cover up scars. They don't want anybody to see the scars that they have. As a result of that, you cannot trust what you see. But in the world, they're preoccupied with perfecting the outside. They'll put anything over a scar so they can walk and live their lives like they never had one. No healing for them. That means they have active wounds. And they're covering them over every day with whatever they can find. That's how they live. And they're teaching, if you're not careful, you'll start to live like they do. You'll start covering up all of your wounds. You will. Thus, you will keep all of your wounds. You will. Hmm? The Lord 
God desires you to be healed. And he's going to have you healed. You hear me? But he's doing it. He's doing that. He is the healer. Not us. Remember that. Please remember that. Because you'll be challenged in these areas. In conversation. Out of the blue. By your families. Take note of this one thing. At a moment of weakness, Satan will utilize anybody he can against you. You're being fortified. This is what's happening. You're being fortified. Now, I want to share something else with you guys, but Robin says break. So I'm going to take a small break. I want to come back. I have to share something with you guys. And uh, hopefully it goes over well. I'm going to share it with you guys. We have the Word of God, right? We really do have an opportunity in this troubled election year with all this turmoil. And this precedes the great riots. You know that. These days precede the great riots. I have a warning for everyone. I do. I wish it were good news, right? The good news I have for you is Christ. But I have a warning. And for all of you who will see this warning come to pass, you are not to be moved. We have to break something. Something else is going to break tonight. We have to break something. It's not easy to break, but we have to break it. We do. I'll be back in a minute right here at COT. And we'll talk more about it. His power, his seat, his great authority is what the dragon has given to the kingdoms in the earth. That will be the kingdoms of the beast. Think about this. He has given the beast in the earth. The dragon has given this beast his power, his seat, and his great authority. Understand that these, this beast has authority. It has a seat. And it has power. That word power translates into dominion. A rule over certain areas. Power seat great authority is something you're dealing with. It's all around you. Have you guys ever taken note that when you read the Word of God, right? You're reading the Word of God, you have a breakthrough in your understanding, and almost instantly, somebody contacts you, somebody will start talking to you, and begin to diminish that good word that was sown into you. Have you noticed that? A challenge, right? Something odd dispatched to try and get you to forget about what you just received. In fact, when you read the Word of God, you're always going to have an agent dispatched to you to attempt to steal what was sown. That can be by your troubles, your life situations. By a great many things. During this time, it will increase. Now we just read how Christ is preparing us. How he's washing us with the word of God. He is. He's doing that. He will guide you in the word. You're going to be washed by the word because you gain the truth. 
find the word. Right? And this, this kingdom is going to be put in the earth. Full of critters and other things. Lots of critters. Who has a fear of what's floating? Somebody says, like Paul's thorn. Well, that's a different subject. Similar. Very similar. But Paul's thorn was against everybody else. But it was similar. Who has a fear of this kingdom rising in the earth? Listen, because if you have a fear concerning these times that we live in, right? You're not going to want these times to come about. You're going to want the Lord to come and get you, right? But you're not going to, you're, you're already have it in your mind. You're not going to be able to tolerate what's coming with this dark kingdom, with these dark kingdoms. I'm not going to say they're coming. You guys know it's my, it's my firm belief they're already here. It's just that people cannot see the darkness. They just can't see it. They can't see that darkness. And because it's left solely to the Spirit, you, you guys have to remember, even the experts in the Word of God, they could not see Christ coming. The biggest event on planet Earth, and all the experts missed it. They couldn't see it. They knew everything. These were educated people, and they could not see the coming of the Son of Man. They couldn't see it, but who did see the coming of the Son of Man? Who did identify Christ? Who? Not the experts. They're going to miss it every single time. Do you know why? It's what they're trusting in. The experts knew all the scriptures. They knew all the disciplines. And they could not see Christ coming. That should scare everybody. That should really scare you to pieces. And say, well, you know, how could they have known he was coming? Well, people did know. They did know he was coming. But it was only revealed one way. It's not going to be revealed by deducing it. You cannot just stumble across it. can't do that. It's got to be given by your Father in heaven. That's how it comes. See, and back then, listen to me, back then, they didn't want to hear anybody who came with the spiritual word. They didn't want that. They weren't even authorized to speak. So who did God give that truth to? Lowly people. That's who. Those who were willing to accept what the Spirit was giving. Revelation. Real revelation. This time is going to be no different. It's going to be no different. That's Revelation. That means those who walk spiritually, really spiritually, right? Not boasters and braggers and not those who have built up self-confidence. They know the answer already. They've missed it every single time. Every single time they have missed it. I don't know about you, but in my lifetime, every single expert has missed it. I've heard prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, and it sounded so incredibly sound. It did. It lined up beautifully, and it never came to pass. No calculation has ever paid off. What does pay off is revelation from the living God. Without that revelation, one is effectively blind. And that revelation comes through Christ, through those vessels who walk spiritual. Many of you, God has given a truth. That's why you have to be careful not to emulate what you think is an expert. You've got to be you and be real, not copying somebody else. 
Somebody said, and they think they're so smart. Yes, they do, and they miss dead every single time. Every single time. All throughout history, they miss dead every single time. In fact, they never got anything right. Never. God has always, always worked outside of the obvious. He worked outside of the expected. He worked outside of the puzzle. You ever, you ever say to yourself, wow, now this puzzle looks complete. These pieces look complete. This looks like this is what's going to take place. And it does not. Hmm? Anybody ever do that? I'm going to be hated after this talk. Spiritually. By revelation. It's just like what Jesus told Peter. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father in heaven, what does that mean, flesh and blood? That means he didn't, he didn't adapt himself to find the truth based upon the disciplines of the earth, academia, all the knowledge that's in the earth. The Father had revealed the identity of Christ to Peter. And it was upon that rock the church is built. What, what rock? The unmovable rock of revelation from the living God. That rock. That's a rock that cannot be moved. That is the rock no one can pick up and inspect. Either stand on it or you don't. That rock. You know, a lot of people thought it was something else. All you have to do is go back and read it. He said, flesh, Jesus told him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And upon that rock, I'm going to build my church. That is the revelation of Jesus Christ by the Father. Hmm? Direct, direct, direct. I know what people said, but I'm sorry. I can't agree with the people. I know people don't like me for saying things like that. I know the songs they wrote, but I never read it like that. Nor was it. How can somebody? How can anybody be familiar with scripture they never read? Hmm. How's that even possible? When I read that, my grandmother, bless her heart, she said, son, Peter is the rock. I held my peace. I did not see that. Peter was not the rock. The rock was the revealing of Christ spiritually. That was the rock of which the church is built, not upon a man. The church is not built upon a man. The church is built upon revelation, the identification of Christ by way of the Spirit. But I had to hold my peace. I did. I did not agree. And then one day she asked me, did I agree? And maybe she knew that look in my face. I said, no, ma'am, I do not. The church is not built upon flesh and blood. It's not built upon somebody's identity. It's not built upon man. See, that's why I can never get but so far, guys, in life. You know why? Because when God gives you something, you can explain to a person how you receive something from God. They might say, well, how did God give that to you? And why did he give it to you? My only answer is I'm dumb enough to say it, dumb enough to believe it. But when God gives you something, that truth permeates through your entire body. You cannot move from it. You can't, you can't adopt somebody else's stuff over top of it. You can't do it. When the Lord gives me something, that's it. I'm stuck with it. I absolutely believe it. 
He didn't speak to me, by the way. It's meant, well, how did God give it to you? Did he speak? No, he did not. It's a knowing. You can't explain. It's a knowing. In this world, the kingdom of darkness, which is Satan, and the ecclesia, the church, which is you, is in this earth. How many of you have any reservations concerning the kingdom of Satan, these unknown areas, in these unknown times? For example, you, you guys see what's happening in the world, right? You see what's happening. Last night, last night, the president did his little speech thing. And from last night, watching it, this watching the coverage of it, this Republican was speaking. I'm not going to name the name, but a Republican was speaking. And he was talking about the babies and abortion. I was talking about what Lindsey Graham did with a 15-week statement. Um, this Republican said, at least we have a position, you know. And as he said, he was pro-life, but so that we would have a position that they would agree to and so on and so forth. In other words, the abortion issue is going to be, I'm t trying to tell you something, the abortion issue is going to change before your eyes and all those who are pro-life we're going to be faced with a choice, and I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Hear me on this, because I want you guys to seriously think about this. I want you to watch it. I want you to see it. If President Trump, if he's elected, right, then all of a sudden he says, "Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna redefine the terms for abortions." And get everything, you know, back to normal. I wonder how many people would agree with him if he changed the terms as far as how many weeks that child could be covered or not. After he's in office, not before, after. I wonder how many people would also agree with that. Yet they don't agree with that now. Me personally, I'm pro-life. I am. But not pro-life after the statements that I'm starting to hear. I mean pro-life. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. I'm trying to tell you something. A woman knows her own body. That's true. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm spoiled. I believe in the Lord. I do. I believe in God's miracles. I believe in the Lord's divine wisdom. I believe in that. People have to make that choice for themselves. And anybody who made that choice, they probably would not have done so if they knew all the absolutes about it. Most people don't know the absolutes about it, right? But the minds of the people are about to go through some deep alterations, changes. They're going to change. They're going to change. And you're going to see that change. And I'm praying it does not affect you. Listen. We're, we're, we're like a big family here, by the way, especially those in the chapter, right? It's like a big family. I know some people like Trump. I know some people like Democrats and some people like Biden, right? I know that. This is not about division. This is about seeing a stance and seeing the power these kingdoms of the earth exercise over any vessel that would dare be put in a seat of kingship. So you may not believe it now, but these positions in these kingdoms, they're going to change the person who agrees to rule over that kingdom right before your eyes. Although it may sound distasteful, we 
live in very different times. We all know the kingdom of the beast is rising. We all know it's made up of many different kingdoms. We all know that. Out of all nations, out of all peoples, out of all tongues, that's what the Bible says, all of them, not some, all of them. So listen to this. If the, if the first beast in Revelation, the set of kingdoms, is every kingdom in the earth, that wouldn't all the kings be affected. Hmm? Biden. Biden. Biden is old. We know he's old, right? Some people like him. Some people don't. Of those who like him, though, I wonder if they're praying for him. Here's why I say that. These men may not know what they're getting themselves into. If they're not, if they don't operate by the Spirit, there's no way they can see what they're getting themselves into. There's no way. Especially anybody who would agree to take another four years in office, they got to go meet somebody. And that's going to have a notable change upon the appearance of the person. What if, what if President Biden all of a sudden He's been, he stutters. He's been a stuttering person all of his life. All of his life. Right? And he trains himself not to stutter, but he naturally stutters. What if all of a sudden he pops up and he sounds like he did about 30 years ago? After just, you know, one night you hear him like he is now. The other day, you know, the next day, there's no stutter. He sounds like he did 30 years ago. How many people would pay attention to that? I wonder. How many? I'm saying this because most of these kings, do you see what happens to them after they leave office? Have you guys ever ventured in to see what happens to them after they leave office? Most of them are utilized for about another four years in the civilian sectors, right? International relations. Then they're dropped like a hot potato. Some of the presidents have no, they call it, um, they speak about a bank, right? A special bank, which means after you're president, if you still have influence over the people, right? Your bank looks good. Obama has no bank. Clinton has no bank. Hillary has no bank. Michelle Obama has no bank. These guys have no bank. They've been thrown out. You know that, don't you? Tossed. Goodbye. See you later. They have no bearing on what's happening. Nothing. Because they have nothing. They have nothing to move the people with. Listen to me. If you cannot move the people, if you cannot make the people believe, they don't want you there. The whole key is to make people believe things. If you cannot make people believe, they don't want you there. And you're tossed out. When you're tossed out, you have no choice but to do humanitarian things. That's it. But try your own thing. These folks are tossed out. Tossed out. You think they began that way? Nope. Many of them had no idea what they were getting into. There's only a few that did, but many didn't. Had no idea. Had no idea. I mean, people have their little compensation ideologies as far as, as a, you know, maybe it's a clone, this, that, and the other. Right? Folks, what you're about to see is the uncovering of all this. You're going to be allowed to see it so that you know once and for all. Do you know why? Well, once you witness it, despite who's going to be president of any nation, once you witness it, listen to me. Don't beat yourself up. There's no way you could have known. Because most people don't know these folks personally, right? And most people do not know the spiritual darkness of these seats of power. They don't know the grip it can have on a person. 
It's like a good person getting promoted in a company. Have you guys ever seen somebody get promoted and then they get corrupted? Surely some of you have seen that. Surely some of you have gone through that. You get a higher position and all of a sudden you're starting to think differently. Right? Your irritation level goes up. Your company changes. All sorts of things happen. Surely you have felt this. So, listen to me. The higher the position in these kingdoms, the more devils you're going to have to fight against. And if you're not covered and operating spiritually by the blood of the Lamb, what defense do you have? I'm going to tell you now, I know it's not popular, but you're going to see it anyway. You have to see it. Because if you don't see it, how can one's total devotion be to Christ? If it's divided by anybody in this world. Hmm? I like, hey, there are certain people I like in leadership. There are. But they're not Christ. How about that one? God knows them. If somebody were to ask me about my best friend, do you really know that person? I say, nope, but God does. Some of you live with people you thought you knew. Then after eight years, you, 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 you messed up. You didn't know them as well as you thought you did, did you? Many of you have known a person for more than four years. And at the end of the four years, you said, I never thought they would do that. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. We continue to do the same thing because our devotion is divided. We can't seem to keep Jesus on his throne and keep man on the earth, can we? That's why I never speak. I can't speak of a person like they're never going to falter in this and the other. I'll never do that because I know better. And I know that in these kingdoms, you're dealing with a power that the average person has no clue about. You're dealing with authorities. It's what you're dealing with. And right now, oh my. I'm cushioning something for you. You know, some people last time I said something near this last time. And we got a lot of emails here at COT. I mean a whole lot. Some people remember what I said, and they were sickened, just the way I said they would be sickened. But this time, it's going to be far worse. People will say the, the worst things, but what they won't understand is it's not a fault. A fault is not involved. It will become a fault if you harm another human being because of a human being. That's going to be a fault. Hmm? Somebody says Obama's behind the curtain. He's out. He's gone. He's finished. Kaput. I'm going to ask what people believe. They can believe that, but Obama's out. He's done for. Finished. That's my opinion, of course. I don't give you my opinion. Mm -hmm. My opinion, he's out. He's been done for. He's done for. This kingdom of the beast is full of things you probably would not really believe. But people are going to see it anyway. Like Apollyon. Like the influence. A hot influence that will emerge over the earth. That will start consuming people without mercy. And how many people are not going to take the mark? Ten years ago, a lot of people said, well, I'm listen, I'm not going to be here when the mark comes. That's what they said. Right? Because they said, before the beast gets here, I'm going to be gone. Well, first of all, the Bible does not say that. It says that that day of days that everybody is waiting on, when the Lord comes back and gets everybody collectively, that day is not going to come unless there come a falling way first and that man of perdition be revealed. If he is revealed, these kingdoms of this earth are compromised. If 
he is revealed, people are going to be in a world of hurt because they still believe the worldly narrative. They're not concerned about the Lord's narrative enough. They still believe the earthly narrative. I know people don't trust what they say on the news and this and the other, right? I know people don't trust that. But be careful. Because you have the same agents of the same people you don't like whispering in your ear, campaigning to cause you to believe things for a reason. They're trying to put blood on your hands. And if you agree with them, you're going to have blood on your hands. They're trying to make you guilty. They're trying to make you part of a movement. By your salvation, you'll say you'll never have part of. you got to be careful in these days. If it's not Christ, you might want to be careful. Any prideful step towards anything, simply because you trust the opinion of me or anybody else, can get you in trouble. Hmm? We got to be careful to make sure that Jesus is Lord, not anybody else. Men will change before your eyes. Men will save themselves and throw you to the curb. Men will do what they have to do to survive. That's in the world. You're not of this world. You're in this world, not of this world. You know what that means? If you've truly been called out of the world, then these things of the world cannot move you. But if you're still part of the world, you will be a partaker of what comes next. You will be. And I'll tell you right now, they're trying to put blood on your hands. If you get blood on your hands, the blood the Messiah speaks about, not his blood, but other blood on your hands, you're going to have a real problem. Your mindset is going to change. And then you will be given over to a reprobate mind to think those things that are inconvenient are okay. That means you'll become hostile. You'll harm the servants of God and think you do God a service. Remember those scriptures? Nothing of this earth should move any of you. Me? I want the Lord to come back and reign. That's where my hope is. My hope is in nothing else. Isn't that what the Word of God teaches us? Everybody with that hope in them does what? They purify themselves. Isn't that what the Word says? What hope? The hope of Christ, not the hope of man. You guys know when Obama was elected, how many people blindly said, oh, he's, gonna, he's just the best. You, I, you couldn't tell anybody anything. You couldn't. You couldn't do it. Do you know why? Because they had made up their minds. That's what they wanted. They wouldn't hear anybody else. And in truth, what did Obama do? What did he do? What did he do? He did what everybody else does. They do a little bit for a while, then it goes away. That's all they do. That's all they can do. What did he introduce? No, I'm not going there. Because you guys don't want to hear the real stuff they did. I mean, you can't disagree with it. Somebody said divine. No, the people divided themselves. I told people before Obama that Obama 
He's positioned by God and it will draw out of people the truth of them. And when Obama was elected, the hatred in people was so high. They know what the real deal was. They can try and cover it up all day. It was a nation shocker. And we all know that. And it caused hatred. 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 We know that. Then I told everybody during the Obama, the second term of Obama, we're going to tell you guys, I said, don't worry, God will do the same thing with the other side. See, because when Obama was elected, he had a loyalty base that wouldn't listen to anybody. I said, don't worry, God will do the same thing with the other side. That's what I told everybody, and you guys remember. And he did. He did the same thing with the other side. That was with President Trump. And he has a loyalty base. It doesn't matter what happens to anybody. They, they both have that loyalty base. But don't worry. God will pull the covers out with the next step. Because see, God's people must never be fooled by elements of the earth. Or they're not going to make it during the time of the beast. But they're not. We have to realize that men are just men. Christ is Savior and Lord and King. That's what we have to realize. We have to get past anything that can move us emotionally that is bound to these kingdoms of the earth. If somebody's opinion can anger you, you have no chance against the beast. You have no chance against these spirits that are rising. You have no chance. You have no hope, no chance, no anything. If you can be moved by these elements in the earth, how can you say you're going to be stationary with the introduction of the Antichrist? How can you say, I'll overcome everything for the Lord, yet you can't overcome your emotions because of men? Benjamin Netanyahu was another one. People have lost their scruples over these people in the earth. See, compared to Christ, they're nothing. They're just another person in the earth. If that offends you, you've got a problem. And you've got a problem. Somebody asked me, they said, well, Mike, do you like Trump or do you like Obama? I said, these are just men. They're men doing a job that they do. My love is towards Christ. My honor towards Christ. They said, well, Mike, do you, do you like this country? This country is a house God put me in, and I am eternally grateful. I'll never turn my back on the house the Lord put me in. I'll pray for it every day. I'll do what's necessary for this house every single day. I don't operate like other people, blind. I'm not blind to policy. And I'll not blindly follow policy. Yes, the Constitution is amendable. But when you have corrupt people writing corrupt amendments, it's not the Constitution I'm used to. This being a political year, politics is going to separate families. It's going to cause people to walk in pride. It happens every single time, but this time. It's going to cause irreparable damage. It's not a game anymore. It's not some passive thing anymore. Everybody is armed to the teeth. Everybody wants their country to be exactly what they want. And no one is going to accept the outcome. No one on the opposite side of those who, if, if Trump wins, you better believe they're going to be people they won't accept the outcome. They're going to be all on the defensive. If Trump loses, they're not going to accept the outcome. I'm just telling you guys what the deal is. We're at the breaking point now. We're at a breaking point. And in the beast kingdom, the beast kingdom just walked in there and overtook Israel. It was no big problem. Nobody's going to do that with the USA standing. So what broke the USA? You're about to see. It's not the leaders. It's us. It's us. 
Let me ask you guys something in the here in COT. Could Biden or Trump, could that discussion divide any of us? Because if it can, right, then the power of Christ is not within those it would divide. Do you know that? See, where the power of Christ is concerned, nothing on earth can cause division. But if you can be maneuvered not to like somebody, not to like someone, in the body of Christ, because of who they favor, a candidate, you're in trouble. Do you guys see the damage in that? If you're liking Trump or you're liking Biden or you being a Republican or you being a Democrat can cause me not to like you. My servitude is not fully in Christ. And I will do works of, anybody like that will do a work of evil against somebody else. They become an element of division. Listen to me. No topic, no discussion, no anything about this stuff in the earth should cause you to target another Christian with your negative emotions. That is evil. That's evil. And if it can do that, you become a worker of iniquity. So that must be purged. People won't admit this, not in this chat room. But I can almost guarantee that if a lot of people were in a different chat room, oh boy, I don't want to see it. I can already perceive the hot emotions that come out. The defiling of the mouth and the words and everything else coming out. If that's not purged from us, there are going to be real percussions this time. It is not going to, because darkness is rising. A kingdom is rising with it. And people are going to be given over to that kingdom. And it's going to be the worst fracture anybody has ever witnessed. And the damage is going to be irreparable. It's going to set this nation on fire. And the people are going to do it. Mm -hmm. The people are. Only Satan will ever give you a subject to target somebody else with. Do you know that? God will never put anything in you that would cause you to hate somebody else. Your Father in Heaven will never do that. He'll put everything in you to forgive somebody else. He's never going to put something in you to hate somebody else. That comes from flesh and Satan himself, who is the master of flesh. you got to be careful to notice when it comes in, because all of us have different backgrounds, right? All of us have different backgrounds. All of us are going to be moved by things in the earth, whether we admit that or not. But what we have to learn to do is every time that thing rises up, we have to say, no, Christ. That is my Lord and King, my Savior, Christ. We have to realize what's going on. Pray for your leaders, yes. But if you were to harm another human being over a leader, you just worshipped that leader. You did something in the name of that leader. And everything around you is going to have to pay for that. For a long time, it almost seems like the discipline of the Father has been distant. It's been distant, right? Very distant. No, it's not distant. God's been merciful. He's been very merciful. He's been very gracious. He has. I know that in my own personal life. He's been very gracious. These leaders, they need protection. They do. They need protection. Trump, he needs protection. He does. But I know some of you don't like Trump. Trump is only doing what Trump feels strongly about doing. 
I know some of you don't like Biden. Believe it or not, Biden is very old and frail, still kind of fiery. He is who he is. He is who he is. But Biden is not easily bought. He's been there too long, hasn't he? Yes. Trump needs prayer. Whether you like Trump or not, it needs prayer. Do you know why? Then let me say something serious. It's no secret. Before Trump was president, a lot of people hated him. They thought he was a fool, didn't they? Trump connects with people. He does. But he also, right, because he does not understand, he doesn't understand the depth of evil that's in Washington. He pushes it away. He's done things that are not right, of course. All of them have. Right? It's not about having a perfect human. Whoever wins, whether we accept it or not, is who God purposed to win. Trump is a businessman. He knows how to talk to other nations and has been doing that. For many years. Do you guys know that before he was president? Hmm? So he is who he is, but he needs prayer, and here's why. There are radicals in the USA. Radicals who have plans right now on both sides. And it's my opinion, my belief. They're not going to be held back for much longer. There are even more dangerous radicals. They believe that if Biden continues, all is lost. So you know what they're going to do. Same thing is true for Trump. They believe if he starts winning these debates... If he is, in fact, the nominee and starts winning these debates, all is lost, and they will do what they have to do. These people are not of sound mind. Now, you guys know if that happens, what's going to happen to this nation? So let me take you through this scenario. If one of those individuals falls, right, it's going to be blamed on the other side, the speech of the other side, and everything else. Let's say Biden falls, they're going to blame it on Trump's speech and the followers of Trump. That's going to set this nation on fire. That's going to cause a real physical divide of people here in the USA. It also means our military is going to be split. There are already people within the military who have agreed to do specific things under those conditions. If Trump falls, there are subordinates underneath him that will truly believe that's the end of our country. And they will, by force, reconstitute several states for themselves. They're already ready to move. Every day we go forward, things are being moved into position once Trump is in fact the absolute nominee. Certain movement orders will begin in the civilian sector, in the military sector. So it's not a joke of what we're facing. There is no passive outcome, and it's a shame that everybody cannot see this. It's going to upend everything. And our enemies of the USA, they're going to take full advantage of our internal distraction. They will not hesitate to take full advantage of their new opportunity. 
This is where we are. What I just described to you is slight concerning the true facts. It's very slight. It by no means covers the horrible details. It'll be far worse than what I described. That's why I said last night, what's happening in New York, get ready for the rest of the city, is to undergo that. They're already combing the train tracks. Surely somebody has seen special people geared up in special suits. On the train tracks, you're going to start to see those folks everywhere. There are going to be people looking for chemical biological weapons here in the USA. Our young people, our children, spouses, special people out there in the world who may not have a clue of what could quickly unfold. Somebody says, martial law, here's the problem with that, though. Do you not know that although troops operate by orders, you know and I know their loyalty is divided even right now. There is a situation with our military right now. I mean a real situation. It is, I don't think people have the right grasp on what's happening. We truly have an infiltrated country. You all do realize that. Everything is delicate. Everything is delicate here in this country. And when they're delicate, they can so easily fall apart. There are whispers every day. There, you know, there, there's no continuity of the military should the people begin to divide. You understand that. It's not like it was during the days prior to Obama and the rest of the presidents. It is far different. There are armies within the army, air forces within the air force, navies within the navy. Somebody said, are they UN troops? No, they're our troops. For example, you take two sailors, right? Three sailors. One believes in the cause of the Navy. The other two believe in the cause of the Navy, but they're very loyal to their political sides. Something happens because of politics. The people divide. They try to call for martial law. Two of those soldiers will not agree to do it. They'll not put their people under siege. They'll see it as a breach or some issue with the Constitution. And some side of the government will believe and back them on that. Just telling you what I know. So, because I already know that scenario is likely to happen. There are appointed commanders who will then begin to do what they have to do. And when they do this, It'll be a bound loyalty to one side or the other. And at that point, we're going to have confusion among the forces like we've never seen before. This is why the groundwork for Jade Helm took place. Anybody who ever saw any pieces of Jade Helm, they do understand that soldiers were being subdued also. Now why would soldiers go into an operation to subdue soldiers? Now you know. And those folks who are loyal to the wrong side, and they're caught in the wrong parts of the USA, have to be processed and kept. They cannot be released. They have to be re-educated. Somebody has to find out what their true motive is. 
So then the 24-hour mandate of processing centers all over the U.S. That snap configuration is set up and ready to go. And it must stay that way. These are very delicate times. Despite the confusion that you see, people are entertaining people like never before, putting out their best work to keep your mind in other things so that you'll never see the truth. Yet the, the real truth is, the greatest enemy that the USA has is itself. Right now. It's us. That infiltration. There's no need for that. The enemy will be named by way of that enemy's loyalty. You can be a citizen one day, enemy the next. Get ready for regions of the USA. It will be immense. This situation we're in has never happened. Never. And soon people will see it unfold. In the meanwhile, dark things will come about from that. Very dark things. People to save their own skins, their own life? You'll be surprised at what they'll be loyal to. You'll be shocked. Not everybody is as faithful as they would claim to be. You know that test that's supposed to come upon the whole earth, even what the USA is about to go through is not part of it. An even greater test is coming. If you think that is the bad part, you're sadly mistaken. But it will be part of a beginning. And it seems like every day it's closer and closer. And people are tense right now. Very tense. Somebody says Obama purchased guillotines. The USA has had guillotines since 1994. Truth be told. 1994. We've also had the accompanying incineration systems with that and facilities. It was back in 1994. What the USA was truly getting ready for was an Islamic war all over the earth. Those guillotines have been here and the centers are there with them. And they're still there. But that's not the worst of it. It's not. See, while everybody's looking at guillotine, something else is in place. Other things have been developed and made. While everybody oohed and awed at space knows of the technology. Do you really think they just continue to develop technology for the things that you could see? Do you really think the rest of the technology just went into space? I mean, that's fine and everything. But terrifying things have been built. Terrifying things will be used. Terrifying. That's why revelation is important to me. Important for people to understand it. Because not one piece of it is going to fail. And even in revelation, what you read in revelation is a very light version of what will be felt. That's a time for those who messed up of misery. Death is not coming for those who did not choose Christ. Torment is coming. The very thing even Christians are afraid of. You know, truth be told, many Christians are afraid that they're going to suffer. Because they've been acquainted with suffering. And they're afraid that somehow they're going to suffer again. I can tell you right now, if you believe in Christ, right? And if you're frightened or you, you can't really take that, you're not going to suffer. 
You know who's going to suffer and who's been told they're going to suffer? Those who said no to Christ. And how do you say no to Christ? Anybody? See, those things that come out of the bottomless pit, they're going to torment men five months, right? Men are going to desire to die, but death will flee from them. They won't be able to die. Not good, is it? And it's unfortunate that's not going to be from conventional things. Think of them as guardians in the earth. Entities you don't want to see. Who are already here. Who only operate under instruction. See, those things that come out of the bottomless pit. God has given them a command that they cannot defy. They were told not to kill anyone but to torment them. The torment of a scorpion is grievous. So will their torment be. And they were told not to touch anybody with the seal of God in their foreheads, nor any green thing, nor any tree. But only those men who do not have the seal of God in their foreheads. See, the truth is, those who have toured and played around with salvation, those who continue to pick men over Christ, the only way a person can ever do that is if they cannot see the cross. If a person could truly see the cross, there's no way they would ever worship people. Now, when we're young, we don't really see the cross, do we? As we get older, we begin to see the cross. There are going to be many who will see the cross and deny it. Those are the ones who are going to face the torment. Not those who are faithful. The ones who played with salvation. Who worked iniquity among the brethren. Those who repeatedly said no to Christ. Those are the ones who must suffer. And their suffering starts on the earth. But it is eternal. See, a person who's really trying to be pleasing unto the Lord, they respect and honor the cross. They're incredibly thankful for it. But there are some who are just doing it for show, for appearances. The uncovering, when it begins, all things are going to be revealed. And when they are, this world's going to turn upside down and everybody's going to be blaming everybody for something. Then a point will come where no one lies. No one lies. No one hides. No one deceives. Because the world will be so iniquitous at that point. There'll be no need to act like you're a good person. Lord have mercy. At that point, the veil will be gone too. When iniquity is revealed, when a person no longer lies, but they flaunt their own wickedness, at that point there is no more veil. The mystery of iniquity, you guys read about that. He who letteth will now let until it be taken out of the way. Then that wicked will be revealed when the Antichrist is revealed. There's no more veil. That's why in Revelation, the first beast came from people. But this other beast came from the bottomless pit. He came from the land. There's no veil. No veil. We have some things to cover. Lord, help me to do it. Watchman says, well, the last three days on the KD file, singing fine, I'll cover those. But we have more to put up there is probably why. I only, it only has that data mark. We, there are a lot more dates that are going up there that are very specific. We're going to get out of that uh, enigma field here, right? I have to be very specific because people's lives are now standing in the balance. For example, the fires. The fires. Here's the problem, though. Even if you warn about fires and tell somebody where they're going to start, they knew accelerant was used in those fires. They knew that. But who's going to move on somebody's 
win somebody's note, right? When I move to do something like that, to put something up there like that, I'll be as specific as possible, but don't expect me to use a megahorn to blow it out there. I'm not doing that. I can't do that. Somebody said, is the U.S. going to be divided into five sections like it was spoken on past the post program? Yeah, I believe that. Do you guys know how many people have said the U.S. is going to be divided into five portions? Do you guys, have you guys ever heard that from anybody else? Back in 2010, I believe it was, I said that one time. I tried to explain it. That was long before anything ever happened. But it was more of a mystery to folks. I don't think it was believed. Because in that same time I was speaking, I went through the process of what's happening. Now, how could a person know that, right? First of all, can I tell you guys something? Can I tell you something? Something for you guys who believe in Christ. This is for you. Who's the most important person in your life right now? But don't, don't, aside from Christ, who's the most important person in your life? Who is it? Do you guys have an important person in your life outside of Christ? I want you guys to answer that. Somebody says, so why? With children? Okay. There it is. Somebody says, everyone else could answer. Hear me on this. Here's why. Your father has set you up, right? To be very effective. Well, let me show you how. Have you guys ever tried to, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're not zoned out. But you're looking at a situation, and all of a sudden, it's almost like everything gets foggy. It's just a little foggy, almost like you start to mentally drift. You ever do that before? And then all of a sudden, chaos enters into your mind. You guys ever do that before? You ever do that before, anybody? I'm, I'm trying to tell you something here. If you've ever listen to a person describe or you ever saw a situation and you began to like really focus or lock into it you began to drift right and then all of a sudden when you drift it's almost like every subject you ever thought about hit your mind all at one time and you go off and do something else right? some people try to see where a situation is going they look into the situation and as soon as they get focused on the situation, here comes all the information from everything else that has nothing to do with the situation. You start hearing people's audio or, or podcasts. You start hearing everybody's opinion. Everything just comes in all at one time. Almost, it seems like something is trying to stop you from seeing any further into whatever you're trying. You're trying to see where the situation is going. But you can't because your mind is bombarded by a bunch of stuff. Anybody ever do that? Hmm? Two things here. Motive is the very first thing. Why would you have all that all that stuff jumble your mind up? Because you're try why were you trying to see where the situation was going? Let, let me just share this with you. If you ever look into a situation, let your reasons be authentic, please. In other words, don't look at a situation so that you can go tell everybody else what the situation is going to be and what the probable outcome is. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be purposed behind it. Let it be very authentic. That means you can't see this situation and say, well, I'm trying to see this for my children. No, don't do that. A better scenario would be this, right? You're looking, you're talking to somebody you love, and all of a sudden, you think of that situation that could affect them. 
Then go look at the situation out of your love for them. Do it for them. Don't ever do it for yourself. Do you hear me? Never do it for you. Never do it for you. That means never do it for any broadcast. Never do it for any reason that can edify you. Do it authentically for somebody else. Let them be the first thing. Right? That should be your motive. Out of love for somebody else. You guys got that? That's your motive. Do it out of love. When you do something like that out of love, something happens. Anyway, the second thing, right, is when you're looking into the situation. Most people focus on the situation and they try to start to categorize everything they see. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Next time, after you've been motivated by love to really find out what a situation is for somebody else, to help them out, make sure it edifies them or lifts them up, okay? Make sure you do that. When you start looking at that situation, ask the Lord to help you help them. That's all. No other words. That's it. Ask the Lord to help you help them. Now, that does two things. Number one, it qualifies your reasons for doing things. The Lord said, do all things as you would do unto the Lord and also. But if you do something that does not edify the church or somebody else, what you're doing is in vain. So you take all that out. Once you strip what you're doing of vanity, once you strip what you're doing of trying to save your own life, save your own skin, reputation, all that good stuff. Once you do that, now you're in alignment. Now you're doing it out of love for somebody else and make sure you do not benefit from it. You cannot capitalize on it. You cannot benefit on it. Let it be authentic. Second, the Lord has already promised you that he would always help you help somebody else. When your reasons are authentic, when you're not selfish, not vain, not prideful, none of those characteristics. But what you do is from love. It's out of for love to edify this person in him. In love, once you do that, the Holy Spirit's going to help you. The Holy Spirit comes in the name of the Lord. It will be your assistance of assistance. If the origin of what you're doing is authentic in the eyes of the Most High, you will not hear cluttering thoughts. You will not be bombarded by a bunch of noise. When you do something authentic for somebody else, when you cannot benefit from it, but you do something authentic for somebody else, your eyes are opened for that reason. God does everything for a reason. If it grants you an ability to do something, it's for a reason. Let your reasons be bound in love itself. Not man's love, God's love. I would never look into a situation for a rotten person. I would look into the word of God. There is no way in the world, for all of you who have been tracking all these weird things that I say, right, and the timing and all this, you guys have been tracking it. You know what the outcome is. There's no way that you're not able to be far more accurate. There's no way. The problem is always going to be you. At night, is you have to take authority over your flesh. If you don't believe you have to take authority over your flesh, lay down at night and try to think of nothing. Try to hear nothing. And see if you're not bombarded with situations. I used to do that. I would lay down. 
and I was trying to clear my mind just to talk to my father, and I couldn't, because every other thought, trouble, everything would come to my mind. Do you not know that right now, I can sit here right now, and no thought can come to my mind? I can sit in absolute peace in any environment. There's a reason for that. When you constantly make sure that you cannot benefit from those things you do, then you're doing things for love's sake. The day I do something that I can benefit is the day I'm going to be chopped off, my eyes are going to be closed. Why would the Lord give me anything if all I'm going to do is perpetuate myself? If I'm truly in servitude, then what I'm doing, I'm doing for other people to edify the ecclesia, the body of Christ. And I'm doing it where I will not benefit. There's no way all of you are not more effective than I. I hope that some of you capture what I'm hearing, capture what I'm saying, not hearing, but just saying, I will employ that for other folks. And be real with it. Because if you think it's going to stop right there, you're wrong. Have you guys noticed I'm not moved emotionally too much? Always somewhere in the same, you know, area. I get tired sometimes, yes. They, even those around me, they know I'm not moved emotionally. It's not because I'm morbid or anything. Yeah. It becomes a real type of skill set they see it as, especially in very uh, stressful environments. The Lord can grant you peace that you would not believe. His peace is real. It's very real. He can declutter your mind. Many of you need that peace. You do. Your mind is going a thousand miles a second. And you have no peace. You can have peace. It takes a simple realignment. Authentically with Christ. So that when you're, when I'm talking to people, I have to know who I'm talking to. Often the Lord will show me what that person's life is. Now listen to me. When he shows me things, do I see disgusting things? Yes. Do I see things that people will say are unforgivable? Yes. And you know what it does? It makes me love that person even more. Let me tell you why. When a person is struggling, they want to know the Lord. But they're struggling with all this evil. They're fighting for their very lives. It causes a compassion to ooze out of me and a determination to never give up on that person. Do you know that? I never, I would never blame anybody for what the Lord shows me. And it never drives me away. It drives me to go back to the Word, to labor for them so they can be free. See, I don't know about everybody else. I do not agree with Satan being victorious in somebody's life. So I'm not one of those who will ever say, well, that's what you get. I do not agree with Satan being victorious in somebody's life. And if anybody is in sin and they're trapped, Satan is victorious at that moment. I do not agree with that. Because I don't agree with that. I see a lot of people. So I know who I'm talking to. The more I know about a person, the more compassion that comes out of me. Listen, so if you were able to see a hidden part of a person, and it would disgust you, do not expect your father to open your eyes to that person's truth. Because the Lord shows you truth, right? He will show you the truth. 
but he's not going to show you anything. It's going to cause you to point a finger. Don't expect anything from the Most High when your heart is like that. It will drive your passion to make you love that person even more. And that's the difference. And the reason why I love those people even more, I know what it is to struggle with something that you're constantly losing against. I know what it is to lose and sin anyway. I know what that is. I know what it is to be upset with yourself because you did not maintain a standard. I know what that is. So I do not agree with Satan destroying people. See, because the truth is, if a person could see what hell was, not one soul on this earth would agree to it. Don't you think? Don't you think? The only one that I said person, I'm not talking about tares, I don't believe they're people at all, but I'm talking about a person. If a person could see what hell was, they stay far away from it. They would change everything about their lives. But God is not scaring us into heaven. He's not scaring us into heaven. What the Lord is doing is separating us from seeing those things so that our choice is not based in fear. No, it's going to be based in truth. In the truth. That means you're going to have that freedom of mobility and freedom of environment to choose. And your choice will be real. Again, if God showed all of us hell, not one of us would sin. We'd be scared to death. We'd never go there. We'd be frightened to pieces. And out of our fear, we would not sin at all. Right? But how many could not sin at all out of their desire to honor Christ for what the Father did for us by giving His Son. The Lord wants true children. I wouldn't even want a child that would give me a hug because they're afraid not to. Who wants a child that's going to listen to them because they're afraid not to listen. Nobody wants a child like that. Everybody wants a child that will choose them over everybody else. That will choose their advice over everybody else's advice. That's why it feels so good when a little tiny baby hugs you around the neck because they chose to do that. Right? It's one of those uh, uh, little moments that you have when a little tiny, when a baby hugs you, they choose to hug you. They do so spontaneous. It's very different because they chose to do that. They weren't frightened into doing it. They chose to do that, and it touches people. The Father wants us to embrace him the same way, not out of fear. No. But from love itself. We have a work to do, wouldn't you say? We had an, that was an uneasy conversation, by the way. It was. I saw people logging out. I saw you logging out. And he said, well, let me see what he's going to finish. Oh, he's saying the same thing, let me log out. I saw that. We know that happens. We have a very difficult year to go through. And it's just not like any other year. This one counts. The rest of them counted, yes, but this one. Much damage. Soon to be done. And it seems as if nothing will turn that away. That's what it seems like. My hope, my hope, is that people, God's children, will not falter and fall away. See, that statement in the Bible where it says, there must come a falling away first. That's heartbreaking. I personally do not want to see any of you fall away. I don't control that. I don't want to see it. I don't. I'm constantly asking the Lord, what can I do to assist in the opening of the eyes of God's children? What 
can I do? Because I see that time coming. I get painful reminders. That time is coming. That would be the beginning of the stone, or the stone steps itself would be the beginning of that, and that's awful. I don't want to see that come. I want to do everything I can to, to ensure that we have the Word of God, the, the, the Word of God, that we're unmoved by these situations in the earth, that we can overcome all things of flesh in Christ Jesus. And all of us can see. And all of us have healing. Because he really is coming. Somebody said, as a woman, I dare not speak. Nobody listens. Not true. Not true. When people speak, everybody listens. They may not respond, but they heard you. That's why everybody has a grandmother's story. Don't they? Most people have a grandmother's story. Don't they? Well, my grandmother told me this, and my grandmother told me that, and my grandmother told me this, so... Huh? If all these people have grandmother stories, and everybody listened to Grandma, didn't they? That's right. You know what Grandma did? Grandma spoke anyway. You know what the Bible says? A woman is not to instruct a male. Do you know why? We operate by two different chemical types. Men are given a specific spirit in comparison to women. Can a woman instruct a man on how to handle his offsets that he faces, right? The heart's aggression? No, because a woman wouldn't understand that. Women should instruct women. Do you know that? Women should assist and instruct women. The Bible specifically says that because a woman is very particular. Men are brutish in a lot of ways, right? A woman is not brutish. She's not. She's very gentle. A woman cannot instruct a brutish male how to continue to be gentle. That's something a male must adopt. A male is only a male because of specific characteristics, right? If those characteristics are gone, that male is no longer a male. Men must have a boldness to go forward with the word of the Lord and plow through everything that will seek to stop it. Adam, when Eve sinned, Adam was not a man in that moment. You know why? Because Eve said, ooh, I got some fruit. You want, I got, they got this fruit. You want some too? Adam should have said no. He should have threw that fruit down and said, let us go seek repentance. I'm not going to let you die today. I'm going to cover you. See, if Adam had a mentor, right, that was brutish, he would not have fallen for that trick. Eve was just sharing with him on an emotional level what she found. Adam should have said no because the Lord instructed me differently. See, a male has to stand there. And despite what he loses, he's the one that's purposed to obey. Do you know that? If everybody left Adam, he should have stood there and obeyed. But because he didn't, death entered he should have stood in God's truth and covered Eve. He could have covered Eve. No punishment would have come because of Adam. That's why men have to be brutish. They're to be brought up in ways not to move left or right. Not to flow with the wind or the water or by feeling or anything else, but to stand firm on the word of God not moving in principle or any other way. what men are for. That's why the devil spoke to Eve and not to Adam. Adam would not have considered his speech. Women 
are different. They consider everything. Everything. It's not a flaw, gentlemen. It's actually a gift. But men have to stand firm. Because women are made to operate by their emotions and they're meant to feel things. If a woman could not feel her environment, she could not feel her children. And her children must suffer greatly. Women must be able to feel everything in their environment. So often everything in a woman's environment will speak to her. And it's not all mumbo-jumbo, is it, guys? Because a woman can know your location without the cell phone. Can't she, gentlemen? But that man is there to govern. What spirit enters and which one don't. He is a door to that relationship. The male should cover the woman. If God made man the head... Then as the head of that body, the man must never allow Satan to function. Never. That means that man must stand firm on the word of God and do exactly as Jesus instructed and not deviate on his or her own path. He can't do that. If a man did that, a woman would certainly discern it. And that takes male guidance to give balance to another male so they can interpret their own strength, that sternness, and weaknesses. That takes male guidance. A woman cannot instruct a man in that. But she can. And that's why. Just like a man can instruct a woman on childbirth, can he? No. Can't do that. God knew exactly what he was doing at the beginning. The truth is, we often lose sight of what God was actually doing because we try to interpret things of the Lord offensively or against somebody else. I've heard a lot of men use scripture against women. That's not what that scripture is for. It's an explanation. And if a person actually reads, they can have that explanation. They can have the details. Hmm? What if a woman wanted to pray for me? What if a woman wanted to share scripture with me? She can share it. She can also pray. Right? But there are certain things about a male a woman cannot give instruction to. See, this was about instruction. Not sharing the word. Instruction. <sighs> hopefully. Hopefully. One day. Nobody's going to use the word of God. For their own agenda. They'll drop their agenda. They'll say Lord your agenda is what I follow. They'll do so to the best of their ability. That's what's important to all of us. That's why I want the truth from the Holy Spirit. I don't want, I do not want an interpretation from flesh, from people, from any of that, but by the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important when another person is speaking by the Spirit. If it says the same things, then they're indeed talking by the same Spirit. But the Holy Spirit never contradicts itself. And let's go ahead and face it. People have their own agendas and emotions. And oftentimes that will, that will intervene and block the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always speaks. We just don't always listen. We don't. We become very loud. Anyway, those things are good to see. They are. But folks, I'll tell you once again, there's no way in the world any of you should be powerless. No way. And I hope that all of us will always worship the Lord. We can compliment our fellow man. We can pray for our fellow man. Be careful not to worship your fellow man. Be careful, especially in these times. Please, be careful. All right. 
I want to say God bless all of you. I had no idea it was 10 o'clock, but I did start. Late. It, it actually, well, it's actually 8, but, but Eastern time is 10 o'clock. Can you guys believe that? Can you believe that? <laughs> I still have, still have a little oomph in myself. Interesting. Mm. I'm going to ask you guys something before I go. Listen, give me your answer right now. Should we or should we not post COT's financial page on the site. This is the last chance you have to say yay or nay. I want it to be your decision. Should we or should we not post COT's financial page on the site? If no, type a zero. If yes, type a one. I type a one. I want a one. You can type a zero if you don't want it up there. You can type a one if you want it up there. I personally want it up there. See a one, see a zero. How many? Come on. Hopefully I see it. You guys can type what you want. I just want your opinion on this. Oh, you get a lot of yes. You get a lot of yes. Somebody said, no, people just need to ask. One, it would help. Well, I just, this is about openness, that's all. Just about openness, that's all. I like to be open, especially uh, in this environment we're in. So, so we got some zeros and we got some ones and we got some nays and we got some yays, but a lot of ones. We got a lot of. We have more ones than uh, zeros. It will be in the members section. It'll be in the members section. So you still have to have an account to see it, but uh, we got a lot of ones. I think the ones outnumber the zeros. I do. Somebody say can of worms. I agree. It is a can of worms. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go over the strengths and the weaknesses in our online meeting tomorrow. I'll let you guys know when. So tomorrow, listen, that means I'm going to have the page ready tomorrow. And based on your decisions, it will either stay put or it's going to go up tomorrow. So we'll have one more. We'll have one more conversation about the strengths and weaknesses of it. Admins, make sure you're there, right? And then based on the outcome of that conversation, it'll be it'll be for that and a couple of more things. It'll post. Okay. It'll post. But but think think of this. Think of this. If people do not see it, right? If if they don't see it, they have no clue what's happening. There are too many people out there who have now copied COT and people there was a person who was telling me, wrote me by email, I get these a lot, to turn the volume down, the music down, in the video. And, of course, you know, when I see the word video, I'm like, no, we don't have videos. We don't make videos. So the majority of people out there still believe that COT is the authentic site. Whatever they're viewing, they think that's it. They do not know the, you know, the real COT. But this will help clarify more than a few things. Right, it will. Transparency is important to me. It really is, especially dealing with the Lord's operations. And the reason why is because everything that's kept, everything that's kept concealed or something like that, Satan will always have a field day of. And you'll only go so far. Right? Plus, what happens if something happens to me, this is to say I'm not in COT anymore. Something happens to me, I'm gone. And other people I've taken over. Right? But they're crooked people. Can they be crooked with open finance with the um, with the open finances? They can't. It keeps everybody honest, doesn't it? Sure, it's going to spark up conversations this and the other, right? Right. But keeps everybody honest, doesn't it? I think it will. I think it will um, provide just another pillar of, of a difference in this organization. I like real things of the spirit, I do. Right? So if it's more, if, it, if, if one day we get, one year we get a million dollars, and so be it. And we'll see where it goes. If one day we, if one year we get one dollar, then so be it. We'll see where it goes. But that'll be a good tool. It'll keep everybody honest. It will.
It'll keep everybody honest, won't it? I think it will. It really will. No, it won't have any names in there. I can't, we can't do that by law. You can't post that by law. You can't put names in there. I, I checked a few things. You can't do that with uh, names. Can't do that. Can't do that at all. So tomorrow we'll we'll figure out. No, no names are in there. No names. No emails. No nothing. It's just figures. That's all that is. Just figures. Right. So we'll we'll get the nuances um, uh, worked out. We will. We get the nuances worked out. But some people may want to give, uh, like for example, if a person gives personally, right? That can't go in there. It, it, it probably won't go in there. But nobody can give personally right now. That's not here yet. That's impossible to do. Nobody can do that. No names or anything is in there. It will show. It, it will. But I'll be open with what I'm doing. Right. This is the foundation of this organization. Right. We're we're moving places. Moving. Somebody discussed with me today about 130, uh, no, 235 acres of land for COT. They did that today. Isn't that interesting? That was today. 235 acres. So I had about a two-hour discussion with someone like that. About 235 acres. So I found that to be... Uh, His favor. That's not done yet, but his favor. And there's no, you know, this is a, listen to me, this is a, that's different, right? So, so you can almost see where things are going. Since the beginning, we've operated spiritually by spiritual things. We face a lot of opposition, yes. Right? Because we don't operate normally like other folks. But um, we have a time upon us. This world is going to get very dark, extremely dark. And we already know we have a dark kingdom arising. We do. And so we only have so much time to get everything in order. Right? But don't worry. Everything we're going to do like that openly, like the page of the finances, we'll have a public meeting about. We'll do that. So that all of you guys will have made that decision. And then after we get everything together, the admins and I will make that final decision. It'll go forward. Somebody hmm. said, do I speak Italian? No comment. Somebody said, COT Village in our future could be. Yeah, it could be. Could be, could be. But we'll, we'll discuss it, right? We'll discuss it. I, I tell you, when you uh, it's, uh, when you get property, if somebody ever gives you property, right? You still have to pay taxes on that stuff. You guys know that, right? <laughs> you have to pay taxes on it, and you have to maintain it, and develop it, and all this, that, and the other. And so, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. That that really depends on quite a few factors, and ultimately. Uh, that depends upon the Lord. See, I'm not one to jump at every single thing that happens. It may sound good. It may seem good, right? But do you know how many people I've seen jump on an offer like that because it's free and then it bites them in the end? The Lord knows what he would desire to do with COT, and I'm going to be careful to listen to the Lord in all things, right? Not just uh, if it's beneficial, that doesn't mean it's from the Lord. That's not what that means. So I have to be obedient to the Lord, too. I have to seek him out with a lot of things. I know what it is for things to look good, and then they end up doing something else to you. So it's important to me to hear from the Lord on this. And normally how that happens is somebody who is disconnected from the whole thing will start speaking the exact things I never shared, right? I never shared. And when they start doing that, and it happens again and again, that's the Lord. He always does that. He always does that. But there, there, there are lots of things that come with that, right? Lots of things. So that's something that will take some, uh, some further, uh, further steps in. 
Somebody said Trump can build on that land. No, we'll see. We'll see. As I said before, not all things given away or given to you, not all things that seem one way in the beginning are blessings. All right? Normally, when the Lord blesses you, it is so incredibly precise, it's not even funny. Like the server blew up. How can somebody pay the exact cost of a processor? Uh, when I say the exact cost, I mean shipping too. How can that come out to be precisely the same? You, you can't do that. Nobody can do that. Nobody. Because that person had no idea which one, it was, which vendor it was going to come from. They couldn't do that. That was the Lord. That's how he always does. He always does that. I mean always. He always does that. So I always get those confirmations of exact figures. I'm, when I say exact, I mean exact figures. No variance, no tolerance. Exact. That's how the Lord works. The Lord works just like that. So it's awesome when he works like that. That's my confirmation, by the way. You have to determine how things are confirmed in your life. It may not be like that. That's what I recognize. That's what blows me away, right? Because nobody knows outside of my own brain, and how can a person do that? You know how many times that has happened? There have been times when COT needed something, and somebody would give the exact amount on something they knew nothing about. We went one time, we went, what, four months, and we were, COT was just empty, and somebody out of the blue, on the last, the very last day, gave the exact amount. The exact amount that keeps happening over and over again. And it's amazing. It's just amazing. But that's what I look for. If I don't see that, I don't go for it. I'll decline it. If I don't see that, I'll, I will decline it. So anyway, that's where we are. Folks, I'm going to say God bless you. I'm going to join you all tomorrow. I'll put that up on the website tomorrow. What time that meeting will be. It's probably going to be around 2 or 3, somewhere around there. Okay, it'll be a short meeting with a couple subjects. Um, the little page part, that's going to be a tiny piece of it. We have something else we have to discuss. All right, so uh, hopefully you remember the conversation tomorrow. There's some things that uh, you guys are going to have to know. Something you're going to have to think of. And some things we're going to do collectively. Okay. God bless and keep all of you. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT.